Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. About seven years ago, I did a video about accessing computer bulletin board systems on the channel here. And this is actually one of the top search results for people looking for information about computer bulletin boards, believe it or not. It's accumulated about 45,000 views over the years. And not much has really changed in the world of computer bulletin board systems, but I did find a really cool client that runs on the Mac, iPad, and iPhone for accessing those bulletin board systems. So I thought I would show it to you and also take a look at the landscape of how we can explore this old technology that is still in use today by people who are very passionate about it. Now the terminal we're looking at today is called Muffin Term, and this is probably the best way to get on these bulletin board systems if you're running on a Mac. And although we're going to be very Mac-centric in this video, I think you might like to see some of the bulletin board systems we're going to connect to and some of the things you can do on them in case you missed my original video from seven years ago. So we're gonna kinda touch on uh, the BBS systems as we play around with this application. Now on Windows, my suggestion is SyncTerm. Uh, this is the app that I demoed in the video seven years ago, and it looks like they're keeping it up to date here. The last update was just recently, in fact, actually uh, today <laughs> at eight o'clock in the morning. So they're still working on it. The Mac version does get updated from time to time, but as you can see here, the video is all messed up on it and it just hasn't been working well for me. And in addition to this, I'll show you some other ways that you can access these bulletin board systems just using your web browser as well. So let's take Muffin Term out for a spin, and the only way to use a terminal emulator like this is to put it full screen, because this is how I used to access things back in the day on my Apple IIGS back there, but also on my PC. Now Muffin Term, uh, by default, will emulate an ANSI DOS terminal, which is, I think, how most people, at least in the 90s, were accessing these things. But I'll show you another mode that it operates in that I think is really cool as well. Now, if I hit Command-O here, I can pull up the list of bulletin boards that I connect to on a regular basis. And we're going to connect to this one called Captain's Quarters 2 because this is a really awesome bulletin board system that is sort of modern, but works like the uh, best bulletin boards I experienced back in the early 90s and late 80s. So let's click connect here. And as you can see, we are connected at full speed. And it takes a second here. This is over Telnet. And here we're greeted with an awesome piece of ANSI artwork. And I can log in now to the bulletin board system. So I'm gonna type in my name here. And of course, I have a password I have to put in, which I'm going to do. And then when you first log in, you're presented with some of the news as to what's going on on the system. And what I love about this bulletin board system, and I'll put the link to it in the video description, is that there is so much going on here. There's active message boards. There's all sorts of cool things you can do. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of updates just from the month of January 2023 here. And you can see that I am the only user logged in right now. I do have a message from the SysOp because I recently joined this bulletin board system. And if I click uh, on that, I can get the message here from the SysOp welcoming me, welcoming me to his system here. Now you see just how quickly everything is popping up, but this was not the experience back in the old days. So one of the neat features of the muffin term here is that I can slow down the speed of the screen to emulate what it felt like to be on a 2400 baud modem, for example. This is how uh, I typically browse the bulletin board scene back in the day. So if I go over to the message forums here, you can see just how slow things were when you were accessing a bulletin board system with the modem speed that most people had, again, in the late 80s, early 90s. And there was a time that 2400 baud was really fast. In fact, my first modem was half that speed at 1200 baud. So when you went from that to 2400, it was a very big jump, even though it's still pretty slow to get around. Uh, so now that we're in the forums, let me show you what a message board on a bulletin board system typically looks like. So what we can do is hit A for area change, and we'll get a list of all of the different message boards on this particular BBS. And what I'm going to do here is put the speed back on full speed so we can see things a little quicker. One of the fun things about living in the future is that you can just hit a button and everything gets faster. Isn't that great? But back in the day, it used to cost a lot of money to go faster. 
So here we've got just about seven forums that we can browse. I'm going to select the Apple 2GS forum here. And if I hit R to read, I can uh, maybe start at message 700 and see uh, some of the messages here. And some people are talking about uh, Apple Squeezer RAM disk. It looks like Byte Night, the sysop, posted this one uh, not that long ago, just on January 4th, announcing some uh, new software coming out. And this is the kind of thing that you would experience. You'd go through here and just talk with people. And that was a bulk of what you would do on a local bulletin board system, just communicate with people. And what was so, I think, different about the bulletin board era versus today is that a bulk of your experience was located close to where you were geographically. Because here in the US, at least, we had a limited calling area that we could call for free. So a lot of the activity you would do online would be on the local bulletin board system that might be a town or two over from you. And I have friends to this day that I met uh, on bulletin boards back when I was in high school and we still keep in touch. And so a lot of the people you were interacting with were mostly local because otherwise you'd have to spend a lot of money to make a long distance phone call. But that's how I downloaded Doom and some of the other popular shareware games of the day was making one of those long distance phone calls and hoping mom wouldn't be too upset when the phone bill came at the end of the month. Now, another thing you could do on your local bulletin board system was connect up to networks like FidoNet. And I covered that in the original BBS video that I did, so definitely check it out. But basically, you would post on a message board that was local on your system, but every message that you posted would get sent upstream and then basically echoed from one bulletin board system to another all around the world. And I think at its heyday, there were tens of thousands of bulletin board systems connected like this. And basically, one system would just call another one and pass these messages around. And it was amazing. Within 24 hours, you could uh, actually get a message from one end of the world to the other for free just by hopping things around there. So that was pretty cool. Now, let me go back to the main menu here and show you a couple of other features that I thought were pretty cool on uh, Muffin Term here. Uh, one is that you do have some different video effects. So right now I've got it on the standard VGA 25 line mode, which is what I experienced most of the time uh, when I browsed uh, my bulletin board systems. But they also have some things that you can add to the mix for added authenticity. So we can add some scan lines here. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, add a tube curvature. So this was more about <laughs> my cheap uh, VGA monitor uh, experience here, where you didn't have quite such a flat screen. So we've got some cool uh, scan lines here, along with a curved effect. Uh, you could also simulate some of those green uh, amber <laughs> displays that many of us had at the time. My little Apple IIc had one of those. So you can really mess around here with a whole bunch of different options, including a CGA mode. This one, I do have to adjust to accommodate some more columns here. There we go. So a couple of things get a little messed up here as you uh, mess around with them midstream. But you get the idea. You can kind of customize things to a place that you want it. And because this terminal is in such active development, I think we're going to see some additional things added here to give you some different options for what your screen might look like. And what you just saw were just a couple of the different things you can do to tweak your display. And I've got another thing I'll show you in a minute that's really cool from a retro computing perspective. Now, while we're on this bulletin board system, it might be fun to take a look at some games because one of the things people did on BBS systems was play games with each other. And one game that I think is very popular, even to this day, is called Trade Wars 2002. Had some great ANSI artwork here. And in this game, you are a space trader, and you have the ability to set up a planet and explore a solar system and trade uh, commodities and build up your empire. And because this is on bulletin board systems that were typically a single user experience, what was neat about these games is that you did have that solitary pl one player kind of thing going on. But as you built up your empire and you saw other players' uh, bases as you explore the solar system, you could attack them while they were offline and destroy them or take some of their stuff. And so the game's mission here is to not only make a lot of money, but also build up your defenses so that when other players encountered you, uh, you would have the ability to fend them off. And this is like full on PVP permadeath here. This game is tough, especially if you don't know how to play it. So when you were on a popular bulletin board system running trade wars, a lot of the time you would get 
pummeled a lot until you kind of figured things out by the more experienced players. But this is something that a lot of people play to this day. And I think there's actually like Trade Wars servers out there that do nothing other than uh, serve up Trade Wars here. And I found another game on his system that I used to play quite a bit called Operation Overkill. And this is kind of like a wasteland RPG game. But again, it involves playing with other players where you can set up encampments and either work with players or work against them. Uh, so some really cool stuff here. It's got a neat combat dynamic also. So right now I'm being attacked by Cobra Man here. And if I go to hand-to-hand -hand combat, because I don't have any weapons, and I hit attack here, uh, what's going to happen is I have to hit a key when I see the letter A on screen. I just missed it there. So let's see if I can get it this time. There we go. Now this worked better on a modem because you didn't have as much latency on a modem as you do with Telnet, which is how we are communicating uh, with this server right now. So things are a little different uh, using Telnet for your BBS connections versus a dial-up modem, but still we can get that experience here. And that's what's so cool about what we're doing here with Muffin Term. Even though it's a Telnet client running on a modern computer, it is actually the same experience as what we would have if we booted up Telnet perhaps on that old Apple IIgs back there or on a regular old PC and used an old DOS client, uh, this BBS will work exactly the same way on those because it is communicating exactly as it did a few decades ago. And what makes Muffin so cool is that it works just like those clients did, including when you want to do a file transfer. So another popular activity to do on a bulletin board system was to head over to the download section, into the wares, if you will. Now, of course, I was always on the up and up, and I only downloaded shareware, but some bulletin board systems had a secret room for their high-level users that might have some pirated software on there, and you would download the software or game or whatever you wanted to download through the same terminal application you were using to access the message boards. So for example here, if I go in and list the files uh, on this particular server, it looks like they've got some Apple II stuff here, so maybe Arkanoid 2 might be worth downloading. Now every BBS had a different interface. On this one, what you do is hit the space bar uh, to tag the files that you want to download. Maybe we'll do some California games here as well. And if I hit escape here and then uh, go to D to download files, uh, what we can do is download the two files that we queued up. So I'm going to click on yes here. And the uh, download protocol that I used to use was called Zmodem. And what I liked about Zmodem was that it was probably one of the more efficient ways to download. I think Ymodem G might have been a little more efficient. Um, but what was cool about Zmodem was that when you uh, activated a download on the other side of the connection like we're going to do now, it would automatically start the download process on the terminal. I didn't have to hit any additional keys. It would just detect the file was coming and download it. So what we're going to do here is uh, just say no to disconnecting afterward, and we're going to hit enter to start. And what you'll see here is Muffin automatically uh, starts downloading these files to uh, my downloads folder. Now, back in the day, a file this big would have taken a lot longer to download, but we are essentially downloading a file, a binary file, over Telnet using that uh, Z modem protocol. And this worked, again, exactly the same way over a dial-up modem with that Z modem protocol. And so it's just neat to see all this stuff working here and be able to work with the BBS using Muffin here, just like I used to work with them back in the mid uh, 90s or even earlier than that. Now we're going to move on and show you one more feature that I thought was pretty neat about Muffin Term. But before we do, I do want to direct your attention to the ANSI art section of Captain's Quarters 2 because this is one of the things that I loved about the bulletin board system days was the artwork that you would see on screen coming over your modem. This was using IBM ANSI graphics, and it was amazing what these artists could come up with, especially given how limited they were with uh, what the system would allow them to create. So for example, you can uh, select just some artwork here and see uh, some examples of some really cool interpretations of the Joker here, for example, from Batman. Now, of course, this is coming in a lot quicker on my modern system here over a, a broadband connection in Telnet than it would have been on a modem at the time. Uh, but you can get a feel here, just looking at a few different uh, images, just how cool uh, some of these 
bulletin board systems could look with the right artist designing the artwork here. So cool stuff and an art form that thankfully is not dead. You can still uh, find new ANSI artwork today on some of these bulletin board systems that exist really to keep the magic of all of this alive. So cool stuff here. I'm going to log off of this bulletin board system and log on to another one that is run on a Commodore 128. Let's have a look at that. Now this one is called the Particles BBS and I want to direct you to a setting that I have in my phone directory here where you'll see my terminal emulation is set to Petski, which was a Commodore specific format for text and graphics. And this is something that I never really experienced back in the old days because I didn't have a Commodore and none of my terminals that I use supported Petski. But this BBS that we're going to connect to, because it is on a Commodore 128, will give us that experience here. And it also works with ANSI graphics as well. By the way, you also heard that beep. Muffin's got a really cool system bell that sounds very authentic to the old BBS days as well. So you've got that going forward as well. So I'm going to hit return here as instructed. And what's going to happen here is we're going to go through the login support. I'm going to say, yes, I support Commodore Color Graphics. And we'll let that run through. I'm going to leave it at 40 columns. I found 80 columns didn't quite work on this, so we're going to leave it there. But there you go. You can see we've got um, some different artwork here because this is in a Commodore-specific format. Now, I forgot what my user number was. So one of the other features of the Muffin term here is that they have a sticky note thing that you can pull up. And I wrote down my user number, so I'm going to type that in here real quick. Unfortunately, you can't move these sticky notes around and there's only two of them. So maybe they can improve that later. Uh, but I can also here type in my password and I should be able to get into this system now. So certainly a little less screen real estate here because we're only at 40 columns. But what I love about this uh, BBS that we're connected to is that this is legit running on a old Commodore 128. It's got some modern hardware on it. I think it's running with a flash drive that gives them about four gigs of storage, which was cavernous <laughs> for uh, what you would get on a Commodore uh, by comparison back in the day. But uh, here you go. You've got an idea as to how things might have looked on a Commodore BBS back in the day when you were logging in from a Commodore that supported Petski terminal emulation here. And again, this is something that would work exactly the same way if you telneted in from a Commodore or even on the Mister or something. So it's really cool just to be able to get this experience here. So lots of cool stuff here with Muffin Term. And as I mentioned, it works on other platforms too. So let's see what it looks like on my iPhone. So here we've got Muffin Term now running on the iPhone. And back in the old days, having a little handheld computer that could access BBSs would have been mind blowing. Uh, but we're going to do it here in a second. Now, if I go into my BBS directory here, you can see that it is empty. And we've got a bunch of bulletin boards already set up on my Mac. So what I can do here on the Mac side is go into Settings. And if I go to the Logs and Files section here, I can save a copy of my dialing directory data. And what I'm going to do is drop this into a folder on my iCloud account. And we're going to be able to import it here into the phone so we can have all of our different BBS systems loaded right in. So let's do that real quick. All right, so I exported that file from the PC. I'm going to click on this icon right here on the phone. I've got a folder here called Shared Stuff. And I'm going to go over to Muffin Term. And now it has merged my directory from the computer. And if I go back now, as you can see here, we're good to go. And all of the settings that I had on those particular systems will follow. So if we jump over here to Captain's Quarters and click on Connect, uh, what we will get is Captain's Quarters just in a much smaller screen here, as you can see. There we go. We even got all the ANSI artwork here. Now I'm going to disconnect from here. And just to show you how this works, let's go over and look at the uh, Commodore 128 uh, thing that we connected to a second ago. And here we go in Petski mode now as well. So all of the settings that we had before carry over. And I can check my uh, messages here on this Commodore bulletin board system anywhere in the world on my mobile phone using this awesome Telnet client. And like the version we were just running on the Mac, you also have some settings you can adjust on screen here. So I could add that CRT curvature, for example, 
Not as uh, cool, I think, on the little phone here as it is on the computer, but you can still add it. You can put the scan lines in. You can even do all of those other modes we looked at earlier. So lots of cool functions there. And on the iPad, it works much in the same way. And earlier, I loaded in a bunch of my systems that I connect to. And as I click on Connect here, I can use my iPad here as a little BBS terminal as well. And the software, again, works the same across all these different platforms. File transfers also work, and it will dump the files off, I believe, in your iCloud directory on uh, these Apple devices. So really cool way using modern equipment to get at some retro BBS systems. And if you're looking for a list of these things, you can go over to the Telnet BBS guide, which does a pretty nice job of keeping track of all of the latest and greatest when it comes to Telnet BBSs coming online and offline. And they've got a nice filter here where you can sort it out by the software that it's running. And this is a way that you can narrow it down to specific platforms. So for example, one Apple II BBS platform is called GBBS Pro. So if I select that and apply a filter, it will give me just the bulletin board systems that are essentially running on Apple IIs. So once you know the system that you're trying to connect to, uh, this can help you get there. Now, another useful tool that I found, if you don't have a Mac, for connecting to Telnet BBSs is something called MyFTelnet. This is a web-based BBS client, essentially. And what I can do here, for example, is connect to Captain's Quarters 2 using my web browser. So not as fun as, I think, using the muffin term, but if you're using a different platform or just want something in your browser without having to install any software, uh, this is a great way to do it. And what it will do also is retain the bulletin board systems that you connect to on a regular basis and store it in the browser. You can also export the entries just like we did in Muffin Term and import them if you're running over to a different browser. So uh, some fun ways, I think, to get at uh, your bulletin board systems now in the 21st century. And I'm going to direct you to my original video, which has a lot more history about bulletin boards. And you should also check out Jason Scott's awesome documentary on bulletin board systems that I'll also put down below in the video description. It's several hours long in multiple parts, and it covers everything that we just talked about in great detail with the people that actually did it. And I really enjoyed watching it. And I may give it another watch because it's been a while since I uh, took that documentary in, but it's a really great way to experience what uh, I experienced as a BBS user back in the early 90s. One other source here is Reddit. There is a subreddit for BBSs called slash RBBS, and you can find some other folks uh, who share a passion for bulletin board systems there as well. And I think what happened here with bulletin boards is that once the internet came into being and suddenly nothing was a long distance call, Everything changed, and I think people didn't see the value of connecting to a bulletin board system any longer when they could connect to an FTP server anywhere in the world and get everything they wanted to get for files. They could go to Usenet and have a much faster international discussion with people. And of course, email worked everywhere for free. And I think it was uh, really all those components that made the BBS world obsolete for most folks. But it's great to see that it's still being kept alive, not only by the system operators who operate these Telnet BBS sites, but also developers like Molly, who got Muffin Term up and running for Mac users, and of course the team that supports Sync Term on the PC, and even other projects here like the Reddit page and uh, FTelnet here that allow you to enjoy some of this stuff in other ways as well. So that's going to do it for this update on my BBS video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.